Hello, hello, we're live. Welcome, welcome. I know it's the very beginning of the video and no one is in here with me yet, but they will be shortly. And we're gonna get started in just a minute. Oh my goodness, what a huge, huge milestone for me. So this live is celebrating the fact that I just hit 10,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane to me. Um, I can't believe I hit 10,000 subscribers. That is just a ridiculous milestone. Um, I started this channel about two years ago, really in the height of the pandemic time around here. Um, and I'm absolutely so blown away that just by sticking with it and doing something that I truly love, I absolutely adore the community that has kind of grown around this channel and the folks that come back time and again in order to continue to pursue their love of painting and passion of creation, um, whether you use it for um, stress relief or something you're really passionate about that you want to learn and grow as an artist. Um, I'm just so, so grateful for um, anyone who subscribes to this channel, who watches this channel, who even just watches a single video and likes it or comments on it. So thank you, thank you so much um, for all of your support. So today I thought as part of a celebration of, or just a commemoration of hitting that 10,000 subscriber mark that I would uh, revisit my first, my very first live painting session, which I did um, uh, pink flowers with these blue leaves, which is just a fabulous color combination that I absolutely adored at the time. I still love, um, but my video skills were considerably lacking um, at that time, and the video itself was um, pretty low quality. Um, you know, the lighting was terrible, so on and so forth. Not that I'm that much better nowadays, but uh, I thought it'd be fun to kind of revisit that topic and hash it out here again with you. So if you're joining me today, thank you so much. If you're watching this in the future, this is just a great um, time in my um, work here with uh, the YouTube channel that I'm really excited about. So thanks for watching and let's get painting. Um, so if you are here and you're watching, feel free to say hello. I can see you in the comments. Um, Judith, hello. Thank you so much for joining me um, and your kind words. That's very sweet of you. Um, say hello. Let, let us know where you're from and we will keep the conversation going. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask. I will address them as we go. They can be about painting or about anything regarding my watercolor practice and journey. Um, so I'm happy to answer them. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna do a very simple, my first live was a very simple floral uh, kind of motif with a couple of flowers. I'm gonna change it up a little bit, but the big theme was this pink and blue combination, which I thought was just so lovely. So I'm gonna use Quadacridone Magenta and I am using my Bao Hong sketchbook here. This is 100% cotton um, paper. I love this sketchbook for watercolor or this watercolor journal for watercolor. Um, it's fabulous, 140 pound cold press, 100% cotton. You can paint on both sides of these sheets so you get the most out of um, your book. And then I'm using my core paints as usual these days. I think when I first recorded this session, I was using probably Windsor Newton Cotman, um, or maybe Daniel Smith, that's possible too. Um, I didn't actually look to see what I was using. So I'm just pulling out Quadacridone Magenta, but I'm watering it down quite a bit. And Judith, you're joining us from Lisbon, Northern Ireland, welcome. My husband and my son are actually planning a trip right now to the UK, possibly Ireland, possibly Scotland, possibly Eastern um, England, but they're still figuring out all the details. So they're very excited to go this summer. All right, so Quadacridone Magenta, lots and lots of it. And then for our blues, 
Um, I'm actually going to use a combination of ultramarine. So I'm gonna water down this ultramarine. But I'm also gonna add a little bit of Payne's Gray to it, just a little bit, just to give it more of a navy tone. It'll take a little bit of the redness out of this. And just these two colors together, I think looks so great. So welcome, if you're just joining us, I see a few more people have drop, drop, <laughs> dropped in. Thank you for joining me. Um, let me know who you are if you want to in the comments. Feel free to pop in there and say hello. That way I get to see who you are. All right, so we're doing these florals and this is just a big, it's a petal, a large uh, petaled flower. And I'm gonna start with, um, I'm also using, sorry, my Velvet Princeton Touch Brush, uh, or my Velvet Touch Princeton Brush. Um, it's a size 10 and I'm gonna load it up nice and big, and then I am going to around a center. So I'm gonna to try to keep an open center. You don't have to use a pencil, but I am just going to create this very light, very broad petal here. And it's very light, I know, it's probably a little bit difficult to see. And I'm gonna create another one. I have a little blue in my brush over here and another one over here so I'm just using a couple of strokes to fill it in I'm trying not to overdo it leaving a little bit of white space at the center like where it meets and then I'm going to do one more kind of over here I'm going to let it overlap and don't worry, we're gonna come back to this and add some more petals over top. Looks a little lopsided, I will fix that or start to address that when I add another layer on. But this is just a nice, fun, easy, I'm gonna paint a bunch of these and then we're gonna fill in with blue leaves. So Susie is also joining us, hi Susie. Welcome to the channel. She's only been following for a little bit. Well, welcome. I love new followers. Absolutely. And new subscribers. That's how I got to 10,000. And she's following because of the style. Thank you so much. I feel like I don't have a style. <laughs> Sometimes I'm all over the place. But I know you all really love the folk art inspired pieces. A lot of folks are really enjoying those. And I guess I tend to paint pretty boldly with bright colors. And that I think resonates with a lot of people. And Susie's from Missouri. Welcome from Missouri, Susie. And again, anyone who just jumped in, feel free to say hello. Tell us where you're from. All right, so I got two flowers here. I think I'm gonna put a third down here just because I'm having fun painting these. So you see I leave the center open and I'm just painting. It's a five petal flower right now. Just quadacridone magenta. I didn't add anything other than water to it. And maybe I'll make this one a little smaller. Do do do. If you all have any questions, let me know. Uh-oh, something must be being delivered to my house. My, Do you hear my dog barking? <laughs> or someone's mowing a lawn next door, that could be happening too. Of course, she's been quiet all morning, hasn't said a peep, and now that I'm live, she's gonna pipe up and let me know that she's here. So I'm just adding in a couple smaller ones in here. All right, so we got a couple of different flowers there. I'm gonna let them dry. This one is pretty much almost dry. And I'm gonna pull out some more Quadacridone Magenta. I'm not gonna water it down quite as much this time. I'm gonna leave it a little bit more 
um, saturated. And then I'm gonna go over this and I'm gonna put these petals between the ones I already did. So we're gonna go and fill in these spaces, still doing five petals on top. Let's see, this is still a little wet over there. That one's still drying, but I think this is good. Water this down even a little bit more. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. That's a little bit bright for me, so I'm just gonna add and actually pull off a tiny bit of color. I know it will dry lighter as it dries. It'll lighten up a little bit. So just putting these same kind of shapes, slightly smaller between the ones that are already there. And I love this kind of soft layering that you get. And we'll do this one over here. Now you can also just leave the magenta the same exact opacity as the first layer and you'll still get this layering um, effect on there because adding a second layer um, still darkens the color from what's be beneath it because it combines whatever's beneath it with whatever you're putting on top. All right, letting those dry. These are still a tiny bit wet, but I'm kind of rushing through here. I'm so excited. I just recently did, um, released a new couple of videos in the Studio Crew Classroom. I just released a couple of videos also on the channel. Lots of landscapes, so a folk art landscape, as well as with a little, oh, with sheep in it. Um, the little sheep, I don't know if you guys all saw that one. And then in the studio crew classroom, I put in the sailboat. So from our Try It Tuesday, we did a Try It Tuesday this week. That was, which was released late. I'm so sorry about that. It was actually released on Wednesday. Um, but it was a small scale sailboat, if anybody saw that one. Um, kind of figuring out how to create this beautiful glowing background sunset. And then in the Studio Crew classroom, we went from the YouTube tutorial where we did it really tiny. Um, and then in the Studio Crew, we changed the color scheme and we did it really big, um, which was a lot of fun. Just pulling out some of this here. And then the sheep, oh, the sheep in the folk art landscape was super cute. They were a lot of fun to paint. Someone had requested more animals. I did a fox, I think uh, two weeks ago, and then just did um, the sheep. And that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Congratulations on the 10,000 subscribers. Oh, thank you so much. That has been um, astonishing to me and I'm so grateful. So thank you guys all for being here. I absolutely adore you um, and love this little community that we've built um, around painting and watercolor and the love of art and creation. You guys are fantastic. So thank you for continuing to come back. Oh, and Judith, you did the both of the landscape, the folk art landscape and the tiny sailboat um, one last night and they came out great, awesome. I love to hear that. All right, so I'm gonna pull out some more while these are drying. We're not gonna touch the centers yet. We'll do them in a minute. We are going to get our blue, our navy. So it's ultramarine and Payne's gray to make this gorgeous navy color. And I'm gonna put just blue flowers around this. All right, not flowers, blue 
leaves around this. So these are still drying. I don't really want to interrupt them. I'm gonna be very careful. I'm gonna use the tip of my brush and I'm just gonna create Look at that beautiful contrast of that navy blue with that pink. What a classy color combination. I mean, it's probably not for everyone. I'm sure there are people who are like, ooh, but I love it. I'm gonna go right off the page here. Just pulling out little stems, doing a couple swipes to create the leaves. I am going to turn my book a little bit, so I'm sorry. It's like it's a little disorienting. So I'm going to bring one right through here to fill in this space, but I'm going to be very mindful that I'm not going over my flowers with my leaves. So I might have to change the direction of my leaf or kind of stop it right before it gets to a petal or not create the full shape so it looks like it's going behind. There we go. What size is my sketchbook? I should know this off the top of my head, but I always forget. Is it six by nine? Uh, we're gonna measure it together. So nine, probably by six, by six. So yeah, six by nine um, is the sketchbook. It's the perfect size to kind of experiment in. Um, I even cut it up into smaller sections, as you've seen in our Try It Tuesdays. So. Let me sneak back here without messing up my, oh, of course it's facing the other way. But do, do, do. you can see here, I even cut this six by nine up into tiny little kind of two by threes or three by fours um, as well. You're welcome. All right, let's keep moving through the And I love this, this brush in particular is great for my leaf shapes at this size. I feel like it just makes like the perfect little leaves. Let's turn you so I can reach the other side. Try to keep you in camera. This is great practice for getting up on the tip of that brush. So it's a drag on the tip, press and pull. Let's see if I can show you that even a little bit better. I know it's hard with the live camera because I can't change the angle. So drag, press and pull. And then if you want to widen it, just do the same thing on the other side. Press and pull, press and pull. Here we go. I'm gonna put a few smaller ones in here just to fill in this area. And I'm starting to see that lovely as the flowers are drying. Um, you really start to see the different levels or different layers in there. Mix this up a little bit. And then since I'm using ultramarine, it's a highly granulating color. So you get some texture in your leaves as they dry. All right. I could keep going with these forever and fill every little gap in here. You could layer the leaves too. Start to use a lighter color over dry leaves. So 
let's say, I think these are all dry. I go in here, let's see how this looks. So there you go. It actually looks like the lighter ones are being pushed back into the background. You just wanna make sure you vary your values, otherwise you'll get, um, it'll get really busy really fast and it'll be um, just one big blob of all the same value. But if you vary the values, you can fill in more gaps in space and still feel like it's got layers and texture and it's not one big blob. So hello for anybody new who joined. I see a few more people popped in, welcome. We are celebrating today. This community has grown so large. And this channel has hit 10,000 subscribers, which is amazing. So if you're here and you're new um, and you've just joined, feel free to say hi. I am revisiting. So this is um, kind of a, a throwback to my very first live stream ever. I did these pink and blue flowers, or the pink flowers with the blue leaves, this color combo. I did not do this layering, which I'm really liking. And feel free to say hello, say where you're from. All right, I'm gonna let those dry. Actually, I'm gonna put a few more up here and then I'm gonna do the centers of the flowers and then we'll be done. So how did this channel grow to 10,000 subscribers? Um, well, I think the biggest thing was for me was just keep going, kind of believe in yourself a little bit, um, keep posting and listen to your audience. I try to listen to you guys on what you really find beneficial, what you'd like to see more of. So if you have suggestions or recommendations of things that you would like to see more of or um, different either subjects or styles or something I haven't done that you would like to see that would bring you back to this channel, please tell me because I will listen. I can't do everything, but um, I try to incorporate things as best I can based on interests. And of course, my abil abilities and skills. So you're not gonna see me do like, at least not right now, um, like high level portrait tutorials. Although I could do some basic stuff, but that's something I'm still working on developing. I mean, everything, honestly, we're all always working and developing our skills and talents, no matter where we are in the spectrum. All right, so let's get this all back in screen. There we go, that's super cute and now I'm going to fill in the centers and I'm going to do that with Payne's Gray and I have two brushes here. I have a liner brush and I also have this petite round um, which is a very tiny kind of detail brush there. Um, so I'm going to use a combination of those. I'm going to start with my liner brush though. Actually no, I'm going to start with my petite round. When you're using brushes this small you just have to remember you have to dip a lot. I'm gonna pull out some Payne's Gray here to work with. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually kind of go around the center and create these dots. And then I'm gonna start just to bring them all in. Don't worry, we won't leave it like that. So I'm just using my whole petite round. And then I'm just gonna dab in with my larger brush actually. I'm gonna dab in the center. Paint's gray. There. 
So dab, 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 and then I'm gonna go back in with my petite round and put these little um, kind of snow bursts. These are like the stamen with the little pollen things in the center there. There we go. Boop, 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 boop. All the way around. I don't do florals a lot anymore. Um, I used to do them a ton. But I find myself gravitating more towards objects and landscapes. And if y'all like that, let me know. Or if you'd want to see me do more florals again. Definitely something I paint uh, in my spare time or when I have a commission or a specific request to do florals. All right. But really, I seem to gravitate towards landscapes right now. Landscapes and learning portraiture. But like I said, um, when June said she likes my style, I feel like I my style changes every day. and And it can. And if yours does, that's all right. Um, you don't have to paint one thing forever for the rest of your life. But I do get in moods. I don't know if you guys are like this as well. Do you ever get in moods where all you want to do is paint like one certain thing? That's definitely how I get. I get a little obsessive about one particular thing. And then that's all I do for a couple of weeks. And then my interest will change. Okay. And one more to go. All right, there we are with our pink flowers and blue leaves this was so much fun to paint thank you all for joining me for those who are here live with me and then for those who are going to watch this later on uh welcome thank you for joining me later on i'm so very grateful for all of you if you are a subscriber to this channel you're an absolute rock star thank you so much and if you um Oh, what was I going to say? If you uh, want to get links to any of the things in the descriptor that I use here today, my supplies and materials, you can find those in the description. I did already put them in there. Um, and then if you're interested in the studio crew classroom and some additional video tutorials, outlines for any of the um, free YouTube tutorials that I do, you can find those in the studio crew classroom. Uh, and then you can find me on social media. If you are a follower and you actually paint and like to paint uh, a lot of the projects that we do on here, go find, um, if you're a Facebook user, um, Umbrella Arts Academy uh, Watercolors or Umbrella Arts Academy with Shana Searcy. And that's a group where people can post their actual um, attempted paintings and get feedback and support each other. So you can find us in there as well. Um, so thank you so much for everyone who has joined me today. Thank you. I'm just reading the comments right now. So wonderful to have you all here. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I look forward to painting with you again very soon. Bye.